And we're here to say that the era of Trump and Zeldin and Molinaro, just jump on a bus and head down to Florida where you belong, okay? Get out of town. Get out of town. Because you, re- you don't represent our values. You are not New Yorkers. What? Welcome back to What TV. Thank you for tapping in because, yes, we want to let you know that you did it. Yes, you all our subscribers and everybody who shared this video because, man, us and Ron DeSantis, we got Kathy Hochul moving and shaking. Yes, she got squatter bills done. She got the uh, homeless mill bill done. She got retail theft done. Why? Because you shared, you cared, you did it. Thank you for tapping in. Let's get into it because it's because of you. We have change. Yeah, New York lawmakers took action this week, voted in favor of changing the law after a series of seven on your side investigations. And any investigation our seven on your side team does is a great one. But when there's actual change happening because of it so quickly, mm-hmm. it's just, uh, it feels so good to see it. Dan, you've been working so hard on this and new developments today. It is crazy. We launched our first squatter investigation right here in Mornings at 10 just a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and we're already seeing some pretty big changes. In just the past five days, our investigations led to an accused squatter getting criminally charged in court, and now lawmakers voted to change state law. Take a look. Announce the results. Eyes 102, nose 43. The bill is passed. Over the weekend, both the state assembly. The bill is passed. And the state senate passed the new bill. It's a small change lawmakers say will have a big impact. A huge impact on so many people who are suffering through squatting scenarios. They voted to change the state's property law, stating a tenant shall not include a squatter. They say it will make it easier for police to intervene in cases when someone enters a home without permission or legal paperwork instead of having to take them to housing court. If we don't voice these issues like this in the news, then none of this may have ever elevated to being a part of the New York State budget just three weeks after the reporting you did here. We've reported on numerous cases of accused squatters, including one that was criminally charged last week in Queens. After our reports, at least four lawmakers filed anti-squatting legislation, which led to a last-minute compromise over the weekend. What do you think it is that pushed this over the edge? This was added in the last few days. It was the voices of so many of your viewers, my constituents. And what TV subscribers, thank you. You made the change for liking, sharing, and watching these videos. Subscribe. Everyone from across New York State, after we did the story last time, I got hundreds of calls from individuals who said they were finally being heard. Me too. I have the new state law right here, and since the governor signed it, it means it can go into effect immediately. So that means police can start using it in cases throughout the state of New York. So, Wow. So you see this, man. Because of you, you brought about change, man. You liked, subscribed, and shared these videos and bringing lawmakers to make change. Because we said, man, sometimes to make lawmakers make change, you got to go to the internet, man. The internet is the new mob. We're making change. And they also made a change to retail. And we're going to take a look at California because California is slowly making change. And we need to push the button on Oakland. Let's continue to watch this video and look at the retail changes that they made in New York City. Kathy Hochul, yes. In Albany are getting closer to a deal on the state budget. And part of that deal includes a crackdown on retail theft. It calls for harsher penalties for assaults on retail workers, a tax credit to allow bodegas and small retail stores to upgrade their security, and funding for law enforcement to target retail theft rings. Governor Hochul spoke about the plan this afternoon, and Eyewitness News reporter Darla Miles is in the newsroom with details. Sandra, this plan affects a lot of people and will make all of them very happy, as we all know. Retail theft rings are an ongoing problem for bodegas, food stores, mom and pop businesses in both common and luxury retail chains. But they're also a problem for customers too, who really can't even shop freely without having to wait for a store associate to unlock a glass case for things as simple as deodorant or shampoo. Retail theft is no longer one person waiting for the right moment to walk in a store when no one's looking to snatch one item and run out of the store. This is what retail theft looks like these days. 
groups of thieves who make it look like a competition on a game show, quickly snatching up any and everything in front of store workers and other shoppers. Elevated tactics bringing elevated levels of violence. Retail incidents involving physical force have more than doubled. This is just not stealing anymore. This is harming. Thursday afternoon, Governor Hochul continuing the state's crackdown on retail theft patterns that started during the pandemic, announcing that an assault on a retail worker will now be prosecuted as a felony. Going from a misdemeanor. What? A felony if you harm a retail worker, man. Yes. So if you go to your Walmart and you think you're going to play with them workers, <laughs> you better have another day, man. To a felony was a dramatic change for a lot of people. They are the ones who allow us to function and thrive in our communities. And that's why it was elevated from a, a misdemeanor to a felony. And now prosecutors will be able to pursue more serious larceny charges that carry stiffer penalties by combining the value of stolen goods from multiple stores hit by the same theft ring. But we also appreciate the changes in the law that will allow Mike McMahon, myself and other DAs to prosecute people and to hold them accountable. The state earmarking $40.2 million to address organized theft. When you're waiting online to pay your bill and someone else walks in with a backpack, goes and empties the shelves and then walks out and you're still waiting to pay your bill. People notice that. Wow, you see it in here for yourself, man. They're going to be making changes to retail. So if you harm a retail worker, I'm telling you, you better take that attitude elsewhere or be prepared to face a felony. Get the word out. Get the word out. Because in California, they still dealing with the squatting and the, all the homeless nonsense that Governor DeSantis has been talking about. Let's just jump into it because Governor Newsom, you need to get your sh together. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria joined mayors from across California at the state capitol today. Good evening, I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The mayors are urging Governor Gavin Newsom and state lawmakers to continue to fund critical homelessness programs. CBS 8's Brian White is live downtown to break down what they're asking for. Brian. Well, it's all about the state's HAP program. That stands for Homeless Housing Assistance and Prevention. And it's been funding homeless programs across the state now. These mayors are asking state lawmakers to keep that money flowing. If HAP were to be reduced, unquestionably the programs that we're currently uh, using those fundings for would have to be reduced or eliminated. And that would push more people out on the street. A bipartisan coalition of mayors from California's 13 largest cities, including Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Diego, are making the case for why HAP funding is so essential. Without this billion dollar investment every year for the past four years, five years, now going on six years. This problem would be significantly worse than it already is. Since 2018, the city of San Diego has received more than $83 million worth in grants from HEP. And they're anticipating another $30 million this current round for things like shelter bed expansion, safe parking programs, and street outreach. Mayor Gloria says HAP funding has been getting results. In April of 2021, my city had roughly 1,000 shelter beds. Fast forward to today, we have over 2,000 shelter beds serving thousands of San Diegans. The state is facing a $68 billion deficit right now, largely due to severe declines in revenue last year. So far, the current proposed budget does not include more funding for HAP, which is why the big city mayors, who all say homelessness is the number one issue they're facing, are making the big push in Sacramento. If HAP is lost, I believe we lose our battle against homelessness in the state of California. We all identify this as number one. So even in a difficult budget year, our belief is that the governor and the legislature will continue to prioritize solutions to this challenge, and we can find a way to make this work. Wow, you see it there, man. Even the mayors are coming together, and we're disappointed, man, over here at What TV, and we got to push the button on Oakland's mayor, man. Sh mayor Shang Tao, she wasn't at this meeting. What's up? You don't want to fix Oakland? Let's take a look at Governor Newsom being pressed earlier and let me know your thoughts, man, because Governor Newsom was pressed about this very same issue earlier last week. I'm going to let you hear what he had to say. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Izzy. Alex Michelson from Fox 11 News here. Um, can you state in a real simple way 
how this money is going to tangibly improve people's communities. What are they actually going to see in their neighborhood due to this money? And, and as a follow-up, sort of on a point you're already making, but you know that especially when it comes to cities and counties, we have seen repeatedly more money thrown at this issue and the issue getting worse. Why is it different this time? Why should we trust everybody this time? Yeah. Well, this, the, the Cameron Resolution grants are, are the manifestation uh, of accountability because they require specific prescriptive outcomes. Uh, they require a specific analysis to be done in terms of what the needs are of the population uh, that we are trying to support. And they also address the issues uh, of, uh, of, of the quality of people's lives. And, and that goes to your question about tangible. It's not what you see, it's what you don't see. Uh, it's cleaning up these encampments. It's cleaning these sidewalks, taking the sidewalk backs, cleaning them up though permanently uh, by not just pushing things uh, from one part of town to the other part of town or out of town and, and addressing the issue uh, of mental health and substance abuse and housing needs. And that analysis has to be done in advance of the application being approved. And we will not approve an application without stress testing that those programs are set up and all they're missing now is resources to actually produce the results. So that's what's okay. fundamentally different in this program. Wow, you see it here for yourself because a lot of people say, man, no matter how much money California and Newsom throws at this problem of homelessness in California, it doesn't fix the issue. It doesn't cause and it doesn't fix the root of the issue and cause people to change and be uplifted to move out of poverty. So let me know what y'all think, man. Let us know your thoughts. Man, Ron DeSantis, do you hear this? They're finally changing things in New York and California. <laughs> Gotta give them credit, man. Gotta give them credit. Kathy Hochul, you on to something.